Hi everyone, my name is Adam and today we're going to be talking about three important features within ACDC Ultimate 10 that give you fantastic creative control over your images. Whether you are new to ACDC or have been using ACDC for a long time, this video will help you better understand the product. We're going to use Light EQ to fix an underexposed image, adjustment layers to create a composition image, and dehaze to remove foggy haze from above a stream. Light EQ enables you to fix underexposure, that's photos that are too dark, and overexposure, that's photos that are too light, by lightening or darkening them respectively. You may notice that Light EQ appears twice in this mode. Some of the tools located on the left menu bar, like Light EQ, can also be found as adjustment layers beneath the layer panel, that's right here. And there is a difference between the two. Adjustment layers create an editable layer that contains a mask, clipping function, and hide-unhide button. These layers are saved when the file is saved as an ACDC file type, and can be reopened later. Using the left menu bar light EQ will give you access to finer tuning, pixel targeting, and gradient masks, but the changes to the layer will be final. First, click Light EQ from the Edit Mode menu on the left. This brings up the tool's settings. There are four different ways to control Light EQ from within this mode. One Step, Basic, Standard, and Advanced. Play around with each to figure out which works best for you. I'm using the Basic settings. Above the four Light EQ controls, you'll find the Brush tool, Vertical Gradient Tool, and Radial Gradient Tool. Let's make a selection with the Brush Tool. You can see what you've selected by checking the Show Brush Strokes box. Raising the Shadows bar reduces the underexposure of the image. I can also play with the midtones and highlights of this image to tweak it to my liking. Adjustment layers are used in correspondence with layers to make composition images. A composition image is a file that includes multiple other images and effects stacked on top of it. Firstly, I'm going to navigate to a folder that contains several images that I want to combine and bring them up in edit mode. I'm going to click and drag these other images from my film strip onto my layer panel that appears on the right. I can click and drag the image to move it. If I click layer two on the layer panel and place it beneath layer one, the layer will disappear. While it doesn't exactly disappear, it's just no longer visible because layer one is located above it and therefore taking precedence over layer two. This brings up an important element of layers, hiding them. Hiding a layer will make that layer invisible, but not remove it from the layer panel or rearrange its location. To hide a layer, click the eye icon to the left of the layer. Notice that we can see our layer 2, even if it's located under layer 1. Now let's finish placing this image. I'm going to select the yellow boxes on the edge of the image and increase the size. Next, I'm going to click the rotate circle in the center of the image. I'm going to hold shift and rotate it 90 degrees. I'm satisfied, so I'm going to commit this layer by clicking the button on the top left. I'm going to quickly place my last image and begin a selection. Highlighting layer 3, I'm going to navigate to the Brush Selection tool, located on the top toolbar. We're going to make a selection of this spaceship, as I want to remove the grayish background from the image. I'm going to use the Magic Smart Brush setting. When we paint our selection with the brush, 
Magic automatically selects pixels that match the color and brightness of the brushed area. I'm also going to adjust the nib feathering sliders as I make my selection. Here we go. We can turn off smart brushing to quickly clean up any areas that weren't selected by the tool, aka these dots that appear in the middle of our selection. Once the selection has been made, I'm going to navigate to Layer, Mask, and click From Selection from the top menu bar. This is going to create a mask on our layer. Masking enables us to pick and choose which parts of an image we see. Let's look at our mask box. It appears next to our layer. The spaceship appears as white in our mask box, while the background appears as black. I'm going to select the regular brush tool, located on the top menu bar. While I do this, I'm going to take note of the brush foreground color, which is black, and the background color, which is white. If I paint over top of my image layer by left clicking, it's going to paint black normally. The same is true as if I use the right mouse button. It will paint white. Nothing strange here, that's good. Things change slightly when we highlight a mask layer. If I paint black by left clicking, it will hide my brush strokes. If I paint white by right clicking, it will show my brush strokes. This matches what we see in the mask preview box. Next, we're going to begin another selection on our layer one. I've hidden layer three. Once my selection is complete, I'm going to mask from selection just like layer 3 using the top menu bar. You can soften the edges of your selection by increasing feathering. To bring up feathering, click on your layer mask box, and then increase the slider that appears beneath. Now that I have my images looking the way I want them to, I'm going to add some adjustment layers to tweak their appearance. Beneath our layer panel are adjustment layers. I'm going to select Vibrance and adjust the sliders. I'm also going to clip this vibrancy layer to the layer beneath it. Clipping an adjustment layer makes it so that an adjustment only impacts a single layer directly beneath it, and not all layers under that adjustment. The clipping button is just that down arrow button that appears next to the layer. Next, I'm going to add a blank layer. I'll do this by clicking the small plus button that appears beneath the adjustment layers. This will add a blank layer above the layer you are currently selecting. Blank layers can be filled with the paint bucket tool, like this, or they can be drawn on with the paintbrush tool. Here, we're using the normal brush tool. I'm going to select a white brush, slightly increase the feathering, lowering the brush size, and paint some particle effects behind the thrusters on our spaceship. Here I've added another vibrance layer, adjusted the settings, and clipped it to our spaceship. Finally, I'm going to add a simple 70s photo effect, while adjusting the screen blending and opacity. Play around with blend modes and opacity. They give you a great deal of control over the appearance of your layers. Anything is possible with layers and adjustment layers. Dehaze is just that. It's a simple tool that reduces mist, haze, and fog from your images. Using the brush selection tool located on the top toolbar, we're going to make a selection of the water in the image. 
I've set smart brushing to magic and adjusted my nib strength and feathering. Once my selection has been made, I'm going to navigate to Select and Inverse from the top menu bar. Click Dehaze from the Adjustment Layer menu to apply the effect to the inversed selection. You'll notice that the edge of the water contrasts the rocks pretty severely. I can increase the feathering to make this edge softer. To bring up feathering, Simply click on your mask box from within the layer panel. Here's another example of dehaze at work. Thanks for watching. This tutorial was recorded using one of our newest releases, ACDC Video Studio 2. Follow the link to learn more or subscribe for more feature highlights and tutorial videos.